Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first and foremost, I just want to really quickly hash, um, you know, basically how HBAR uh, will increase in value from transactions on the network because I do continuously get this question and uh, this is really the last time that I'm actually going to address it uh, just so that you guys know but in general HBAR is the power source for everything happening on Hedera so those transactions that you do see being transacted with um, all those transactions in terms of a base fee are running through Hedera as you guys do see in terms of like the end users and proxy stakers, exchanges, network nodes, uh, Hedera network applications, etc. All of this goes through, you guys do see here, HBAR. Now, right now, okay, you guys might be questioning like, okay, well, if the you know network's being utilized right now, like why aren't we you know gaining value? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, right now, there's just not enough demand. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Like we're only doing about 338 thousand um roughly i was just estimated to like 30 or 338,000 uh transactions a day which honestly is only th and i know that this is going to be mind blowing for a lot of you i'm not even g going to be joking around or anything but this is actually only accounting for $33.80 that is how many like that's how much this transactional demand actually cost in terms of the fee base right now so you could see exactly why at the current scale and uh, I this is basically just the number of transactions processed by the network in the last 24 hours prior to the last metrics update I don't know when this uh, metrics update was so it, it was actually just updated uh, June 10th um, actually so today or, or yesterday sorry um, now within this again it's almost $33 exact and that is exactly why like HBAR right now is not gaining massively in transactional value. But I just want you guys to understand that we are basically morphing into something much bigger than these transactions. And we are going to be seeing a lot more transactional demand going live on Hedera in time. I just want you guys to understand that we are extremely early within Hedera. So a lot of these use cases are going live, you know, either this year or next year. Now let's actually move on and talk about these use cases. So there's this video, um, it's Christian Hasker talking about these use cases, um, specific use case talking about tokenization actually uh, within accounting and things like that um, from DLA Piper and ServiceNow. These are two major giants. We're actually gonna be talking about ServiceNow here in a second, but listen closely to what he is saying here. So members, um, ServiceNow, which is, um, you know, this massive enterprise IT company, um, you know, it counts all of the Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 customers, our, for, uh, our ServiceNow customers, um, are the council members of ServiceNow customers. So one of the customers is DLA Piper, which is the world's uh, leading global law firm. So right. they you know, law firms are by nature incredibly decentralized as well, because you've got all of these subject matter experts in different right. parts different of the world. And different law, yeah, civil law, common it, law, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So they have this need to be able to do, it's very inefficient how it works today. They need to be able to do real-time chargebacks and accounting between these different uh, entities and different jurisdictions like you talked about. So they've partnered with ServiceNow for this capability that is now in production. You can imagine over time, you know, all enterprises have this need to do real-time accounting on the one hand between different business units, but also real-time chargebacks as well. And you can do that by tokenizing basically the invoices between these departments Right. and settling them in real time. Um, and then ServiceNow has other capabilities. So if you start to think, oh, well, that's just one company, uh, you know, that's that doesn't need high throughput. But if you talk about tens of thousands of companies doing this in real time, obviously you need a network that is incredibly high throughput. So I'm, I'm so, and then there are other applications that I can't talk about that yeah, yeah. also necessitate um you know these properties as well and what i think is going to happen 
is, you know, Hedera is just going to be the de facto standard for these types of applications. And then Hedera is going to compete for those other applications that are real web three native type applications that you're seeing over time. So I think it's sort of bi-directional, right? You've got your enterprise coming and adding decentralization, and then you've got- And the rest is just like, just talking about decentralization and these use cases. But um, really quickly, just to rehash what he said, you know, he's talking about tens of thousands of companies basically needing this real-time accounting tokenization. And I could definitely foresee us getting to that point. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. Obviously, a lot of these use cases do take time. Um, but this would play perfectly into what ServiceNow is actually focused on. You got to understand that, yes, they are a leading name behind, you know, a ton of the, you know, Fortune 500 and the Fortune 1000 companies. And you do see that they are building a connected economy where workflows beyond the boundaries of an individual business. Now, when we look at this, this is going to be, you know, pretty huge because this is all focused on digital workflows, digital transformation in regards to, you know, just like network transactions around things like this. Um, you know, when we talk about like, you know, these companies, you know, just having something that's an internal, almost like, you know, IT use case is something huge. You do see here, you know, um, companies across industries will be able to utilize the now platform and the Hedera consensus token and smart contract services within their applications, speeding the adoption of DLT in four main areas of digital workflows, process and data integrity, tokenization, decentralized identity, and multi-party uh, business processes. So, you know, we're really kind of just focused on the tokenization area here because that is a huge area to really kind of address. I've, of course, addressed this multiple times on this channel, um, but you can definitely see exactly where they are looking at within this. So, you know, real-time consensus and notarization of events alongside tokenization of digital assets and representation and exchange of value on the now platform. Um, but it's also just like interconnecting DLT adoption um, between pretty much every single company that is, you know, directly, you know, connected with ServiceNow. Um, and, and, and again, like, you know, like they said, you know, I, I, I thought that they would have like the ServiceNow uh, description down here. But ServiceNow is just a massive giant. I mean, you look at some of the companies here, like for example, you know, you can go through all the industries on their website. Um, but just a few like, you know, Deloitte, for example, um, Coca-Cola, NBA. Um, there's so many more as well. Like, you know, you can kind of just go to like, for example, like the A, um, you can see all of them. Uh, these are some major companies as well. You guys can look through these. You can actually look these up on like the Fortune 500 and the Fortune 1000 list. Um, you can go to like the B here, you know, uh, Blackhawk Network. I mean, like these are some major names. I don't know if any of you know Blackhawk Network, but I actually utilize them right now um, for my router. It's actually pretty funny. Um, but you do see like Coca-Cola and things like that. Like these are some major names. Um, and like, obviously like, listen, are, are all these names going to be like, you know, building use cases on Hedera or anything? No. Um, but the, the, the significance of something like this, and you have like Delta here and stuff. Um, the significance of something like this is these are all going to be, you know, basically interconnected through one use case like through one company uh we talk about this with like ripple right we always talk about like ripple working with like tranglo or like finostra where you have like access to 10,000 plus financial institutions yeah like a use case like this with service now um would have you <clears throat> excuse me um interconnect it with all of these major names and like there's so many products and services here uh, you can kind of see like, you know, for example, like the now platform, right? The now platform um, has, you know, interconnection between, you know, a few of these major names. Um, like if you look here, so these are like the ones that are signed on to the now platform. For example, uh, Deloitte is one of those major names. Deloitte is, a, is also a giant Lloyd's banking group. Uh, these are some major names within the banking scene as well. Uh, so th this would be, you know, again, you know, a major connection source, Wayfair as well. I mean, like some of these are pretty, you know, big names, um, but these are all going to be interconnected through the now platform with Hedera to basically tokenize, you know, workflows and build out, you know, DLT adoption 
through just one major name. And that's why, like, I've always addressed, like, you know, you, you kind of have to look at, like, what one name would actually do for Hedera. Um, and, like, this is why I, I also focus on, like, you know, what they're kind of doing with other use cases as well. Um, like, even DLA, DLA Piper. Um, because, like, DLA Piper is also, like, a major giant within the law firm area. And there's, like, a lot of use cases within that area that we could basically, you know, see come to life. Like, for example, here they are basically talking about, you know, back to basics, the technology part two, learn the basics of AI and machine learning, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and NFTs at the uh, computer and law conference. Again, when we talk about a lot of these areas um, that we will basically see adoption and disruption of from, you know, crypto technology, you know, you know, the law firm area, like law in general, is an area that I'm definitely focused on. And again, you can kind of see a lot of like the areas that we will be disrupting just from like the use case area on here, like data compliance, for example. I know that like data compliance doesn't sound interesting. It kind of sounds boring, right? For like the typical individual. But you look here and you can kind of see exactly where this would be positioning itself in terms of like a use case area. Um, it's more so like about, around like regulations and things. And uh, you can really kind of see this like real-time audibility for every interaction. Like use cases like this, or I should say like areas like this, definitely kind of focus on a few. Like for example, here's a company that we really haven't really heard of in terms of like a use case, but we do see we've created a self-service portal for consumers to come in and view with permission exactly what information is held on them. With Hedera, we're able to take you know that to the next level and prove it on a public ledger, further enhancing trust. Like use cases like these, you know, seem small. Um, but when you actually look at this, this is for some major opportunities within the enterprise grade area. So I'm definitely excited for a lot of these use cases to go live. Like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time and we are extremely early. I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say like that we're not um, because even like in terms of like payments, right? You look at like tokenization within payments and CBDCs and things like that. We're still very early, but you know, there's a large amount of money that will be disrupted by crypto technology. And, and a lot of these major networks will, you know, have, you know, a seat at the table to eat. Um, like here's also now payments, by the way. Um, again, you know, a, a lot of the adoption is happening through just simple, you know, companies like ServiceNow that a lot of people might not have heard about. But when you look at something like this, like there's just so many names around this. Uh, these are like, you know, global companies as well. You know, in major industries, you see the industries here in terms of like government, healthcare, pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. And like these are also, you know, industries that Hedera is actually part of and that, you know, Hedera is actually disrupting currently. And uh, this really kind of solidifies, I would say, like where Hedera is positioned at um, within this market. So to me, you know, yeah, I'd argue that we are a little bit too early if you don't have the patience to, you know, see the value behind something like Hedera. Um, but for me personally, I think that we are perfectly positioned in this market. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.